So today I want to present you the new development I've made towards a new prototype for a fuselage that can allow you to bolt your uh, fuselage and front wing directly into the mast, making your foil more maneuverable, more controllable. So about a year ago, I've shown you this one. So this was my radically short prototype that I milled from an original axis fuselage. So this was intended to replace this. This is a Sealy short stock axis fuselage. So this one is a lot more maneuverable because since you don't have that rudder effect in the back because of the mass that is positioned rearwards of the front wing, if you move the mast all the way in the front, you remove that rudder effect, you get something that is a lot more playful, a lot more fun to ride. The problem is that this involves a lot of manual work, a lot of, 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 of so much work that it's basically unreproducible at scale. So that's why now I came up with this new prototype. So this one is not mill in aluminum anymore. It's 3D printed from a compound of nylon and carbon fiber. So it's a carbon matrix, uh, I'm sorry, a nylon matrix mixed with tiny uh, strands of carbon fiber, which makes it a material that is at the same time very light and stiff. So for reference, the specific density of aluminum is 2.7, so 2.7 times the density of water. This one is 1.06. So it's almost 2.7 times lighter than an aluminum, and it's about half as strong. So still, we can really get some nice property, which allow us to get something that is very stiff, that is very strong, yet that is going to be incredibly light. To give you an example, so this is a small piece that was originally flat. So this is a thin piece of this nylon uh, carbon fiber. This is that PA12CF from Polymaker. And I've already bent it with some pliers. And now that it's bent, I, I simply cannot unbend it manually. So this is incredibly stiff. This is strong. And as you see from that deformed shape, this is ductile meaning that it's not going to snap. It's going to sustain large deformation before breaking. So it's not just going to, on impact, simply snap. Okay, this has capacity to really sustain large deformation, yet this is incredibly stiff for the weight of the material. So that makes it a very interesting material to work with. So if we look at how did I do it, what does the prototype look like? So if we look uh, here at the CAD design. So we can see this is the part that is 3D printed. So if we look at a cut of it, so you can see that this is the part where the carbon stabilizer come and slides into it. This is retained only by one M6 screw. So the, the M6 screw comes from the bottom. So theoretically this is going to be like this and it goes all the way through the, the fuselage and on top there's a knot that it's inside the fuselage and that i'm going to cover with simply some epoxy here to hide the knot so this is the the only thing that retains the rear part of the carbon fuselage the nice part about it is that you can play with the length you want so i go from some super short some longer one or some intermediate such as this one so just by removing one screw, you can easily change the length of your stab if you want to explore more. So the inner pocket you can see here is compatible with this M, uh, 16 millimeters uh, wide axis aluminum fuselage. So something like this. Uh, why is it compatible, especially with this? Because I really designed that pocket so that it's tailored to this adapter. So you, what you can see in terms of the, the rounded part here, the angle of the chamfer, everything is really tailored so that it can exactly fit this one. It would be easy to make modification to make it compatible with any adapter, but in my case, this first version is specifically adapted to this one. This was the other mast I had at home. So with this, I can have a very snug fit and a very tight fit that makes it a, a stiff connection on my axis aluminum mast. So this is a bit uh, how it looks like. So everything is designed. The fit is not perfect, but it's like, I would say 97, 98% there. So you can see at some place, there's some fraction of millimeters 
that are off either uh, over or under but globally the fit is really good and the uh, the performance while riding i couldn't feel the effect of any of those imperfections so for a first version i would say it's it's fully functional and it's fully compatible with these ax any axis black fuselage front wing and you can see these two holes are there so that the the, the front wing bolt directly into the mast and the the third one here is simply a placeholder to cap the screw the extra hole that we have in the front wing that we don't really need this is not structural these two holes that we have here are gonna be filled with uh, m6 screw but this is not gonna be structural the main force goes through these two m8 bolts that goes straight into the mast and the forces are not carried simply through the bolts the bolts are going to work in traction and the side of my wall here especially with my my kind of uh, fill part here is going to be the really rigid part that's going to carry the load and um, transfer the loads from my front wing into the mast so this is for the, the design then what do we need to do from there we need to send this to a 3d printer so this is the software cura that is used to make those 3d print for the ultimaker machines so what you can see here is how it would look like uh, once printed so here in order to minimize the effort maximize the strength i i print it in a specific angle to maximize the strength of the material because the material is stronger in the direction where it prints it's weaker against the direction of the print so in that case the vertical bolt that hold in place the rear part of the fuselage is gonna uh, be there to hold all those weaker slices together and if we look at it looks like all the blue parts here are simply support in order to be able to perform the print so you can see here this is done sequentially it, it comes from the start and gradually builds up like this slide by slide so in terms of uh, how it works uh, this is fairly a, sl a fairly slow process so that takes about 11 hour and a half to print so that involves 124 grams of material this is the PACF PA12 CF from Polymaker and that amounts to about $25 Canadian dollars of material so in terms of material this is fairly cheap but if you would have to print this in a commercial printer the fact that it takes 11 hours that is still going to amount to way more than $25 still the result is really good so if you want to look how the process work so if you look here you can see how slice by slice this model is 3d printed so this is that slow process that takes about 11 hours so besides the the, the bottom of the part here where the support wear which is a little rugged everything else is a very nice smooth surface and it's really surprisingly stiff and surprisingly strong okay so the question is it as strong as this so the answer of course not it's never as strong as this i think i could chop down a tree with this fuselage okay is it as strong as this one probably not but the question is is this one too strong my feeling and my thought is yes for what i do strapless riding free riding wave riding i i have way too much material way too much strength in that fuselage i'm not aware at all of breaking any part of it there's already too much over design into that part this one i don't know yet because i haven't tested enough with it so in terms of raw strength i'm pretty confident from the first ride i've did that this is strong enough the question is will it pass the test of time so in terms of fatigue resistance in terms of wear and tear so i have to see this is just tests of time it's going to take a lot longer to see what about the durability of such part but i'm pretty sure that there's still some room to improve both the design in terms of performance and also in terms of uh, wave so how does it how does it perform so if we try it in practice uh, i would say there's really no noticeable difference with respect to my previous uh, fuselage 
So the previous fuselage uh, uh, was the same, has the same position with respect to the mast. It's a little bit uh, wider, so it's going to have a little more drag than the previous one. Yet, when, I, when I'm on it, I rode it back to back with the same front wing. In this case, this is the 699. Uh, I couldn't see any different. I, read, I wrote it with also the 899. I wrote it with the 799. I, I couldn't see difference from my Radical and Short one. It's really stiff. I cannot feel any flex whatsoever in the connection with the front wing. So the feeling is very direct and it feels really solid. It, it, same thing when I pump. This rear part doesn't flex at all. I couldn't feel, I still have a good capacity to pump. Here I'm doing some small strapless jump. No problem with the impact. It can easily absorb the shock I can have from this. So overall, very nice experience and it brings one less hurdle if someone ever wants to try this uh, and to build one. So instead of having to machine it, now you can go to your local shop and 3D print it. The only thing you have to do is to buy one of these carbon tube on Amazon and fit your re rear stab onto it. So much easier if ever some of you want to try it. Now you can do it at home. I'll share the, SDS, the STL file in the link to the video. So before uh, finishing and wrapping this one up, one upcoming thing soon, it is not yet ready, but it's gonna come soon, are also 3D printed base plate. In order to replace the original access one that are fairly heavy, I'm currently experimenting with some 3D printing design. This is not the final design yet, to be able to replace and make something that's much larger, lighter than the original one that is yet as stiff as the other one. So that's gonna hopefully come up very soon.